I thank you all for coming here this evening and participating in our Sunday program. And uh, there's been a slight adjustment in the schedule, and uh, we will not speak so long, but we will try to say a little something. Something that actually I just thought of speaking of during the cure time. Uh, I was originally going to speak on a different subject, but somehow this particular bhajan came to my mind. And uh, I decided I would speak from this. Although I've spoken on the subject before, uh, but I think this uh, bhajan speaks for itself about the importance of, of, the, of the holy name of Krishna. And uh, we'd like to read it first and then uh, explain a little bit according to the limit of our realization about the glories of Krishna's holy name. So, can we just. How is this? Uh... No, okay, that's okay. This is called Kevalastakam. Madaram Madhuradu Pi Madaram Madhuradu Pi Mamalayu Pi Mamalam Pavanam Pavanayu Pi Hari Nam Eva Kevalam. More sweet than all other sweet things, more auspicious than all other auspicious things, the greatest purifier of all purifying things, the holy name of Shri Hari alone is everything. The entire universe from the exalted Brahma down to the lowly clump of grass is a product of the illusory energy of the Supreme Lord. The only thing that is reality, reality, again I say reality, the holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Sadguru, Sapita, Chapi, Samata, Bhantava, Upisa, Sikshaya, Chitsadar, Smartam, Harinam, Vivekevalam. That person is a true preceptor, or a true father, true mother, and a true friend also, only if they teach one to always remember. The holy name of Shihari alone is everything. Nishvase, Nahi Vishvasa, Kada, Rudhopa, Vishati. There is no certainty when the last breath will come and put an abrupt halt to all one's material plans. Therefore it is wise to always practice chanting from very childhood. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Hari Sada Vasit Tatra Yatra Bhagavata Jana Gayanti Bhakti Bhavena Hari Namiva Lord Hari eternally dwells in that place where truly exalted, spiritually advanced souls sing in the mood of pure devotion. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Aho Dukkha Maha Dukkham Dukkha Dukkha Taram Yuta Karchartam Vismitam Ratna Harinam Inakevalo Aho, what a sorrow! What a great sorrow! more painful than any other misery in the world. Mistaking it as a mere piece of glass, the people have forgotten this jewel. The holy name of Shihari alone is everything. Diyatam diyatam karno niyatam niyatam bhacha giyatam giyatam nityam harinam eva It should be heard again and again with one's ears. It should be uttered over and over with one's voice. It should be perpetually sung and sung anew. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Trini Kritya Jagat Sarabham Rajate Sakalopari Chidanandamayam Sudham Harinam Eva Kevalam. It makes the entire universe seem insignificant as a blade of grass. It splendorously reigns supreme over all. It is full of eternally conscious divine ecstasy. It is supremely pure. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. So these are eight prayers. Mm. 
actually composed by an unknown author. <laughs> Interesting enough. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, there are various works, prayers, scriptures, uh, which were previously composed by unknown, uh, unknown authors, but uh, when our previous acharyas read these prayers, even though the author was unknown, they could immediately ascertain that this author understood the Siddhanta. Siddhanta means the, the ultimate goal of uh, Vedic knowledge. He understood the goal of the scripture. And uh, because the author had captured the essence of the meaning of the scriptures, the ultimate meaning of the scriptures culminates in understanding one's eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord and acting according to that relationship. And here, this author has established that for him, according to his realization, a holy name is everything. This is consistent with the conclusions of other statements in scripture how Krishna and his name are not different. Mm -hmm. uh, the holy name is transcendentally blissful, it bestows all spiritual benedictions because uh, it is Krishna himself, the reservoir of pleasure. It is not a material name under any circumstance, it is no less powerful than Krishna himself. Uh, the holy name can, is never under the condition of the laws of material nature. It is eternally liberated. Uh, and this is because Krishna and his name, they are they're non different. Nama Chintamani Krishna's Chaitanya Vasa Vigraha Punisho Nitya Mukto Vinatva Namano. This verse is oftentimes quoted to establish how Krishna and his name uh, are non different. Just as Krishna is understood is to be the original source, the primeval Lord, the cause of all causes, Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchirananda Vigraha Anadya Adya Govinda Savakarana Karana. He is the supreme controller. He is the eternal, ever fresh, youthful form. He is original, the primeval person, and he is the Savakarana Karana. He is the cause of all causes. The statements of the Vedas uh, this is a verse by Lord Brahma in his Brahma Samhita. Raj Brahma, who is the original preceptor of our Gaudiya Brahma, Madhava Sampradaya. Uh, and uh, he is established in his prayers, the Brahma Samhita, how Krishna is the primary cause of all causes and he is, has an eternal, youthful form. And he is the supreme controller. And he's original. Advaita Machuta Manada Mananta Rupa Madhya Purana Purusham Nava Yogana Cha Vedeshu Durlabam Adurlabam Atma Bhakta Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. But Brahma also explains how Krishna, he is non dual, his body is not subject to decay, he is, his body is beginningless. Uh, uh, has no beginning and has no end, Ananta Rupa. He always has an eternal, ever fresh, youthful form. And simply by studying the Vedas alone, it is not uh, possible to fully realize the extent of Krishna's personality. Atapite Deva Padam Bhuja Dvaya Prasada Lasanagrihita Evahi, as it explains in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Then, unless, less, unless one gets a drop of mercy from Krishna's lotus feet, one can never really fully understand the greatness of Krishna's personality. And it's not simply by performing austerities, not by studying the Vedas again. And there is no material uh, prowess that can bring about full realization of the Supreme Lord and all His divine manifestations and and his divine opulences, and his most greatest opulence is that of Bhaktivatsaya, which is he is the 
subordinate or subservient uh, to his devotees, which is an eternal manifestation of his pastimes in the transcendental realm of Goloka Vrindavan. This is Krishna. And Krishna is so wonderful that he's made himself very easily accessible in the age of Kali. Kaliya dosha nidhe raja nasti heko mahad gana kirtana deva krishna se mukta sangam varam param vijet. This described the age of Kali as an ocean of all bad qualities, but it has one redeeming quality that kirtana deva krishna se. By chanting Krishna's name, one can achieve all perfection of life. So, his most merciful manifestation, especially for the residents of the fallen age of Kali Yuga, the age of quarrel, hypocrisy, we were explaining last night in one, or the night before, that in the Bhagavatam it is described, explained that in Kali Yuga men are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all always disturbed. One of the symptoms of Kali. Always disturbed, and Prabhupada would oftentimes explain in, in, throughout his books and his commentaries that the symptom of Kali Yuga is that because people's minds are so much disturbed that a slight provocation will create conflict. Just as bamboos, when rubbing together in the forest, can cause a big forest fire. In the same way, friction. There is so much friction in this world due to the degraded symptoms of Kali Yuga. We see that uh, on slight provocation, there is so much conflict between individuals, communities, nations, between religions. How is it possible? Nonetheless, that is the symptom of Kali Yuga because of the all-pervasive, disturbing atmosphere, which is, many people seem to be testifying, it's becoming more disturbing. <laughs> uh, I don't necessarily make that statement, you know, as, as authentic siddhanta or conclusion, but it is consistent with descriptions of Kali Yuga in the scriptures, describing how, as the age of Kali progresses, it is going to become worse. <clears throat> and uh, therefore the Lord uh, is very kind that in the age of Kali he has given us a method by which we can come in contact with him by coming in contact with his name Kali, Kale, Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar Nama Haite Hoisava Jagat Nistara in the age of Kali Lord Krishna incarnates in the form of his own holy name. And anyone who associates with the holy name of Krishna, it's as good as associating with Krishna directly, and certainly he becomes delivered. Here it is described how um, the entire universe from the exalted Brahma down to the lowly clump of grass is a product of the illusory energy of the Supreme Lord. The only thing that is reality, reality, again I say reality, the holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Prabhupada oftentimes says that if you want to emphasize a point, sometimes you have to say it three times. Like, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> if you really want to emphasize, you have to say it three times. And he, he says that specifically in reference to the verse from the Brihad Naradiya Purana, which says that Harinam, 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 Eva Kevalam, Kaloa, Nasteva, 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 Gatiranyata. <coughs> that Harinam, 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 three times it says, chant the holy name, chant the holy name, chant the holy name. In the age of Kali, there is Kaloa, Nasteva, Nasteva, Nasteva. There is no other way, there is no other way, there is no other way for deliverance in the age of Kali Yuga. So this author uh, of this prayer, uh, anyone reads it, captures kind of the essence of what his meditation is, that for him, Krishna's name is everything to him. Mm -hmm. It's just like sometimes a person becomes very consumed by a lover, and wherever he goes, he, he always thinks, 
think there's, I, I remember once reading before, there was a song that goes back quite a time ago. Wherever I go, I always see your face, you are everything. <laughs> it actually describes the characteristic of a person who's experiencing love and, and that when he sees the face in the street, he immediately thinks it's his lover. <laughs> Obviously, there is a, a particular obsession in, in a person's heart. He's, he's obsessed by the object of his affection. And everything he sees it stimulates remembrance of, of that remembrance of that person. But here we see in, in, in this verse, uh, these verses, that for this author, that for him, the holy name is everything for him. It's the beginning, it's the middle, and the end. It's the means, and it's the goal. Mm. Uh, if one wishes to obtain a particular goal in life, and for this author, he definitely gives emphasis that this is the greatest jewel. This is the, there's nothing more, nothing, nothing more valuable. Sometimes we consider, you know, something it's its value in terms of of uh, being of monetary worth but a devotee considers that which is valuable is that which helps him to establish his relationship with Krishna uh, so because Krishna is so kind to manifest himself in his name and there's no more valuable jewel than Krishna in the form of his name because that's our first access to Krishna in this world and the author explains that everything in this world is a product of illusory energy. The only thing that is reality, like reality, reality, I say again, is that the holy name Shri Hari alone is everything. Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Harinam Chintaman explains that in this material world, everything here, although it's, it's real, it's temporary. Mm -hmm. And the Illusion is, of course, our misidentification with this temporary world, thinking that it, it's, it's everything. Um, that is illusion. Mm -hmm. Just like Prabhupada gives the example that a person may accept a rope to be a snake, or may accept a snake to be a rope. A snake is a snake, a rope is a rope, but the illusion is accepting the rope to be a snake. <laughs> so in the same way, when we accept this world to be everything, and all my pursuits in, in this life and all my objectives, all the work that I, uh, 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 and uh, the goal of my works, which I aspire, the fruits of my work, which I aspire to achieve by my labor, there, in this world, it's, it's everything to me. So the illusion is accepting this world as everything. Because Krishna very clearly states that he has different energies. Of all that is material, which is this temporary cause of manifestation, which has birth, growth, duration, production of byproducts, dwindles and vanishes. It's temporary manifestation. Uh, of all that is material and all that is spiritual, you should know for certain I am both its origin and dissolution. Krishna says that, that there is eight material elements. There's eight separated material energies, which is, consists of earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. All together these comprise my eight separated material energies. He says, but aparayamitasthanyam prakritim vini mepaham jiva bhuta maha baho yaidam I would teach you that. Besides this material energy is the spiritual energy, which is the living entities, who though all belong, uh, uh, they, they belong to the eternal spiritual energy, but still they, they become entangled in this temporary by temporary material energy, by dint of identification of the illusion, maya. So, here the author is saying the only reality is Krishna in the form of his name. 
But we can't see Krishna. Brahma Samhita Lord Brahma very clearly states Premanjana Charita Bhakti Valochanena that unless one eyes one's eyes are anointed with the salve of love of Godhead, he cannot see Krishna. One actually has love for Krishna, he can see Krishna. Just as Krishna told Arjuna, he said, You can see me as I am standing before you because uh, of the undivided devotional service. I have given you the ability to see me as I am. But without devotional service, you can never enter the mysteries of understanding me. So without love, one cannot see Krishna. Of course, Krishna is very kind. He appears in the form of Achavigraha, the form of the deity. He gives us an opportunity to see him because our eyes are not yet pure spiritual vision. We cannot see Krishna in his original transcendental form, his body consisting of such an Ananda Vigraha. We cannot see because the eyes are still covered by the veil of the illusory curtain. Naham Prakasha Shavasho Yoga Maya Samavrita. Krishna says, I am never manifest to those who are foolish and unintelligent. For them I am covered by my eternal creative potency, Yoga Maya. So the whole world knows me not. I'm unborn and infallible. Covered. So although we cannot see Krishna, we can come in contact with Krishna, especially in this age of Kali, to our ears. We can hear. And this actually Bhakti Vinod Thakur explains that any object has four aspects. It has a name, form, qualities and activities. And he says similarly the Supreme Lord, he has these, forms, he has these four aspects. He has a name, Krishna, one of his names, Govinda. Uh, his name, his form, which is not perceivable by Atakshi Krishna Namadi Nabhavid Rayan Indriyai Sevamukhe Hi Jivado Svayameva Sprilakshada Krishna says, I, I cannot be seen or understood by these blunt material senses. I can only be understood when the senses are completely purified, saturated with love, when those senses are fully engaged in devotion, devotion to Krishna. So, although we cannot see Krishna, he so very kindly made himself accessible that we get the opportunity to hear from him, hear, hear him, from him also, as we do from the Bhagavad Gita and from Bhagavad Gita as it is. And just as in this prayer is also said that Lord Hari eternally dwells in that place where truly exalted, spiritually advanced souls sing in the mood of pure devotion. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. Mm -hmm. So those who chant in the mood of pure devotion, then Krishna manifests on their tongue. And Krishna says to Narada, Naham tishtami vaikunte yogi nam hidi yeshuva tatra tishtami Narada yatra gayanti bad bhakta. He said, oh Narada, you will not find me personally in this form of Krishna, Sachidananda Vigraha. You will not find me even in the Vaikuntha planets, no, you will find me in the hearts of yogis. But if you want to see me in my full manifestation, my full feature, that full form, which is Shyama Sunda, threefold bending form, the form of Gopi Vallava, who is the protector and maintainer of the gopis, uh -huh. that transcendental lord, uh, who is e eternally surrounded by his eternal associates in the transcendental realm. He said, if you want to see me in that full form, then you, you can, I, become, I go to that place wherever my devotees are describing my pastimes. He says, therefore, not in Vaikuntha, not in the hearts of yogis, but I go to that place wherever the devotees are chanting my glories. That place, I'm very eager to go. Why? Because the devotee, by his purity, he's invoking the Lord's presence. The Lord is very eager to appear. When Srila Prabhupada appeared in the Western world, and when he went to Tompkins Square Park with his little drum, bongo drum, <laughs> that's all he had, he had no bradanga, he just had a little bongo drum, and he was sitting there under the tree, Tompkins Square Park, chanting Hare Krishna. 
people were attracted. Prabhupada was thinking, you know, when he came to, to the West, you know, I can't, I don't have the power. He was thinking himself helpless, but Krishna, you certainly have the power to allow them to, to hear and understand your message. Only you can deliver them. I don't have the power to deliver them. Only if you desire to deliver them. He says, I, therefore I pray that you will deliver them. By his sincere devotional prayers, he, the Lord was very much inclined to appear in his words and when he chanted Krishna's name. And by hearing from him, persons who had previously no contact with Krishna, knew nothing about Krishna, may have heard something about him from other sources which were possibly not giving the full understanding of the Supreme Lord, a partial understanding of the Supreme Lord. But Srila Prabhupada was manifesting Krishna by his words and by his prayer in such a way that by hearing that transcendental sound vibration emanating from his lips, persons who had previously no contact with the Lord were thinking, here's Krishna. Krishna is here. Prabhupada never said, you know, I'm Krishna. <laughs> He always condemned anybody who would give such an impersonal conception to say, I am God. I am simply a humble servant of the Lord. But because of his devotion, the Lord was very much inclined. He said, Lord, for me, eternally dwells in that place where truly exalted, spiritually advanced souls sing in the mood of pure devotion. So our first contact with Krishna is the transcendental sound vibration of his name. Prabhupada considered Krishna's name so important that even sometimes I remember in, it was 1976 when there were articles about our movement that were going, people were accusing of Krishna consciousness movement of being a dangerous brainwashing cult. And Prabhupada and uh, he would, devotees would bring articles. Of course, the court case, there was a court case and Prabhupada said, just bring on our books. Show them our books. That will be our best defense. We will defeat them on the basis of our books. And we won that court case. For Papas, he would, he, would, uh, he would look at the articles, and even though they may say so many things, he would see how many times Krishna's name was in the article. It's this very auspicious. <laughs> <laughs> They're hearing Krishna's name. Say well, how many times Krishna's name is there? So auspicious. Because Krishna's in his name. Someone may think, well, this is a bad rap. You know? <laughs> what are people going to think? Probably wasn't thinking that way. <laughs> of course, we should never do anything intentionally to have people criticize Krishna. <laughs> it's not an excuse for bad behavior in the name of the Lord. But the point is, is that Krishna is, is in his name, and especially uh, when Krishna's name is presented by Krishna's devotee, then Krishna becomes attractive, and uh, the result is that one wants to hear more about Krishna and wants to speak more about Krishna. And because Krishna is so kind, and because he's the supreme purifying agent, as explained right here, there's nothing more pure than Krishna's name. What happens? You know, Prabhupada gives the example, if you put an iron rod in the association of fire, it's all, although it's iron, if you keep it in the association of fire, it becomes hot, hotter, hotter, red hot. It's as good as fire. If you don't believe it, touch it. <laughs> it burns just like fire. It's not fire, it's iron. But because of the association with the fire. So Krishna is pavitram. He's completely pure. And the more we associate with Krishna, the result is our hearts become pure. So we have to open our hearts to first hear the glories of Krishna. And here the author is saying, Oh, what a sorrow! What a great sorrow! More painful than any other misery in the world. Mistaking it as a mere piece of glass, the people have forgotten this jewel. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. And this nice story I like to tell in this connection, which helps to illustrate this point, uh, and uh, we'll end soon because we're out of schedule we're speaking as we said after the after the kirtan but uh, this is a very important point so and it's a nice story so uh, bear with me 
there was a disciple of his guru uh, who once asked his spiritual master, can you please instruct me on the most confidential subject? I want to hear the most confidential spiritual topic for you. Please, I beg you. So, upon hearing the appeal of the disciple, the spiritual master, instructing him, instructed him about the glories of chanting Hare Krishna. And the disciple understood this, this is a very confidential subject matter. He thought, I know something that nobody else knows. <laughs> so after receiving these confidential instructions from the spiritual master, uh, he left the spiritual master's ashram and while he was walking, he came upon some washerwomen in the village who were washing clothes. And in India, as you know, washerwomen, they take stones and they beat the clothes against the rock. And uh, they were, we see this oftentimes when we go in Parikram, past Govinda Kund. I mean, all the Kunds in Vrindavan, local villagers come there to wash their clothes and you know, here beating the clothes against the rock. So he heard the beating of the clothes, but he also heard Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. They were chanting Hare Krishna. And he became a little wondering. I thought I got something confidential from my spiritual master. <laughs> and, uh, and he continued walking, but did not pay too much heed to it until he came upon some fishermen who were hauling in some fish in their nets, and while they were hauling in the fish, they were chanting Hare Krishna. And again, he started to give a deeper concern. Something's wrong. Something's amiss. You know. And as he continued to walk, he saw some children playing. And while they were playing, throwing a ball to each other, they were chanting Hare Krishna. And he said, that's it. <laughs> I have to go back and find out. This is something's not right. I thought I got something very confidential. If it's so confidential, washerwomen, fishermen, children, they're chanting Hare Krishna. Let me go back and ask my spiritual master to explain. So he returned to the ashram and uh, he explained his concern to his spiritual master. You, you, I asked for the most confidential teachings and you explained to me about the holy name and instructed me to chant the holy name but I saw children, fishermen, washerwomen they were chanting Hare Krishna how is it that this is so confidential so the spiritual master decided that instead of explaining to his disciple he was going to teach him by another means and he gave, the spirit, he gave his disciple a very valuable touchstone touchstone has the power to turn iron into gold very valuable. So he gave him this very valuable stone. And, and he said, go back and show this and see if you can get something of equal value from them, if they can appreciate its value. So the disciple, to, upon the instruction of the spiritual master, he took the stone and he went first to the washerwomen. He showed them the stone, the washerwomen looked at it and said, we, we use stones all the time for washing our clothes. <laughs> and they just decided to take the stone and started using it, beat against it, beat against the clothes to wash their clothes. So he realized they couldn't appreciate the value of the stone. He went to the fishermen, showed them the stone. The fishermen thought, this looks like a good weight for our fishing nets. <laughs> uh, but other than that, they couldn't, rec they, they couldn't appreciate any value of the stone. And when the children saw the stone, they thought, well, why don't we just use it as a ball? <laughs> so after going to the fishermen and to the washerwomen and to the children, he went back to the spiritual master, and the spiritual master asked him, he said, so, did you get something of equal value for this valuable stone? And the disciples said, no, they couldn't appreciate its value. And so the spiritual master said, similarly, many people will chant Hare Krishna, but they, can, they will remain indifferent. Hmm. He said, but 
one who's heard the glories of the holy name of the Lord, he'll never remain indifferent to the holy name of the Lord. Because he knows, just as it explains here, that that person is a true preceptor, a true father, a true mother, a true friend, also only if they teach us one, if they teach one to always remember the holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. And the Chaitanya Charitam Street, the Chaitanya Charitamrita says that one has to learn about the truth and beauty of the Lord's holy name by hearing the revealed scriptures in the mouths of Vaishnavas. There's no other way to taste the beauty, the taste, the sweetness of Krishna's name. So one has to hear, just as the spiritual master explained the glories of the holy name of the Lord, and upon hearing those glories, the disciple did receive some very confidential teachings because he understood the value of the holy name of the Lord and would not in any way dismiss it as something or be indifferent to the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. So in the same way, just as the washerwomen, the children, the fishermen, they didn't appreciate the value of the stone because they'd never heard anything about its value. They just thought it was a ball or a weight or something to wash clothes. So the spiritual master instructed his disciple that the confidential teachings about the glories of the Holy Name are also an essential factor. Of course, the Holy Name is so potent and powerful that even a slight contact with Krishna's name, uh, it can have an effect, a purifying effect in the heart. But when one understands the glories of the Holy Name of the Lord, then one will never become indifferent to the Holy Name of the Lord. And one will see that the Holy Name of the Lord being non-different from Krishna is my only connection to Krishna. It is the means to obtain Krishna and it is the end. And one who actually uh, chants the Holy Name in this mood of pure devotion, always endeavoring to purify the heart, cleanse the heart, Chaito Dhaprana Majana Bhava Mahadavagi Nirvaprana as explained in the Shikshastika prayer of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Sankirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years together. This dust is the accumulation of many anarthas or unwanted desires which are keeping us bound and identifying only with this world and incapable of perceiving or, well, possibly perceiving but incapable of continuing to make the endeavor to achieve the lotus feet of Krishna. One who has a little faith, Shraddha Shabde Vishras Kahe Sudhida Nishaya, Krishna Bhakti Kami, Krishna Bhakti Kali Sava Kama Kritahaya. Shraddha means pure, implicit faith that if I simply chant Hare Krishna and engage in devotional service to Krishna, then automatically all other subsidiary duties can be fulfilled. And conversely, it also means that even if I perfectly perform all other duties connected to this world, and I neglect, I don't chant Hare Krishna, I don't hear about Krishna, then Shrama Eva Hi Kevalam, you're a waste of time. Because they ultimately will only end, as described here, by this, there's no certainty when the last breath will come and put an abrupt halt to all one's material plans. Therefore, it is wise to always practice chanting from very childhood. The holy name of Sri Hari alone is everything. So we try to give a little essence of this wonderful prayer uh, and to uh, give a little emphasis to the importance of how kind and merciful Lord Chaitanya is and his representatives, Srila Prabhupada, who have appeared to give us the opportunity to chant Krishna's name in the association of devotees. Srila Prabhupada also, uh, he would oftentimes give the example that his spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura, he uh, taught us that the sound of the Murdanga can be heard only by those who are nearby the Murdanga. He said, but these books, also, as he's given in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Charitamrita, they're called the Brihat Murdanga, the Greater Murdanga. He says, by chanting Hare Krishna here, people can hear me only in the immediate area, but by the Brihat Murdanga, see, Krishna's name can be heard throughout the whole world by the distribution of these transcendental literatures. Because Krishna, not only is he non-different from his name, but he's non-different from the Srimad Bhagavatam. 
This Bhagavat Purana is more brilliant than the sun and has appeared in this age to, to dis destroy the darkness of ignorance. So, this is another wonderful feature of the Lord in this age of Kali who has appeared in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. I also wanted just to take this opportunity uh, to encourage uh, all of you to chant Hare Krishna as we've tried to by this presentation of all the holy name of the Lord and to assist Srila Prabhupada in spreading the glories of the holy name of the Lord. We have a very wonderful program that's been established here called the Shastra Dan program uh, where people can, devotees can come and participate in a very wonderful way to on a wide scale to distribute Srila Prabhupada's books. I, Daru Krishna was explaining how I was back here in the early 70s in this temple. And I can remember in the 70s how there were so many devotees in this temple and our prime mission as Srila Prabhupada gave us uh, and inculcated in our hearts. Uh, he said that these temples are places where the devotees should go out and distribute books like bombs and torpedoes. He says, our books are like torpedoes because you never know where they're going to land. And uh, he established these temples as a place for the devotees to get spiritual strength themselves, chanting Hare Krishna in the association of each other, and to uh, then go out and, to, and, and induce others to come in contact with Krishna in the form of his name and the glorification of his name which Srila Prabhupada gave in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam as well. And I personally came to Krishna consciousness as a result of coming in contact with Srila Prabhupada's books. And it, it was, for me, it was, uh, I, it was obviously, it became obvious to me that somehow it was by some divine intervention. I didn't even know I was looking for Prabhupada. I didn't know I was looking for Krishna. I went into a bookstore called Bintano's in Washington, D.C., looking for a book on yoga. And uh, I picked up Prabhupada's early volume of the Bhagavad Gita as it is, the Macmillan million copy that was, had just been printed around that time. And I opened it up, and the first page that I looked at was a picture of a yogi sitting in meditation and showed him how he was going through and leaving the body. I said, this looks like a good book on yoga. <laughs> And uh, I bought Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, and after work, every night, I would read a little bit from it. And, uh, and uh, I, I later found out, actually, which was also quite profound to, to learn, that although I went into the bookstore, and I paid the price on the back of the book, in Brentano's, it was a price that was on there, I can't remember, it was nine ninety five or something like that. But it turned out that the, the bookstore never even carried the book. One devotee went in there and dropped that book on the shelf and left it there. <laughs> they took my money, but <laughs> they looked on the back of the book, so I didn't even find where it was and sold me the book. But I learned, out, learned later that one devotee had gone in and just dropped it on the bookshelf, but I happened to pick it up. And that really, when Prabhupada said these books are torpedoes, you never know where they're going to land. When I heard that later, it really, really had a deep impression upon me. <laughs> so, uh, um, I always had a deep you know, sense of gratitude because you know, Prabhupada reached out and captured me in pages of Bhagavad Gita. I, I had never met a devotee. All I had was Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. I was reading it every night and still continuing work. And then when I, I finished the book, then uh, I was thinking, uh, I'm not ready for this. It's too much commitment here. <laughs> but I couldn't forget. And everywhere I looked, I was always resonating that Prabhupada's word, words would resonate in my heart and go through my mind. Prabhupada's perspective of different perspective of how I looked at the world based on Prabhupada's words. Because in Prabhupada's words, Krishna was there, and therefore Prabhupada called it Bhagavad Gita as it is. Because he spoke it, 
Prabhupada commented on it just as Krishna intended it to be understood without changing or distorting the meaning. So Krishna's words were, were and Prabhupada's words were, then I started to visit the devotees, and visit the temple. And then when I joined the temple, I stayed for a few weeks, and then the very first day, when they finally let me shave my head, I had to beg the devotees, please let me know. They made me live in the basement, actually, in the old temple. They had a testing period. During those days. <laughs> One, even though I'd been coming to the temple for so many months, they said, no, you sleep on the concrete floor in the basement. We want to see how serious, serious you are. <laughs> so I slept on the concrete floor of the basement for some weeks, and I used to beg them, please let me shave my head. No, you should wait. Don't, not so fast. And then the, well, the first day I shaved my head, the next thing I know, I had a book bag over my shoulders, <laughs> filled with books, and I was out in the in the mall in Providence, Rhode Island, <laughs> trying to convince people about Srila Prabhupada's books. It wasn't very easy. It was very difficult. But that's how, that's how it was back then. And Prabhupada inculcated within our hearts a big responsibility that if you want to please me, you'll preach and distribute my books. So now if not so many devotees are living in the temple, so it's not so easy for you know, everyone to go out distribute books, but this Shastradhan program is a facility and opportunity for those who are in the congregation to actually get a taste of what we experienced, same taste that we experienced you know, back then, although we would go out and distribute books for, sometimes I would do it for 12 hours a day, <laughs> seven days a week, <laughs> in the freezing cold, <laughs> And people used to look at me and think, you know, are you crazy? Don't you know it's minus 20 degrees outside? What are you doing here standing in a parking lot selling a book? <laughs> and I remember even once, uh, it was so cold, my, my eyes were tearing and they would freeze shut and I had to take my glove, my hand out of the glove and, and put it over my eye to get my eye open. And we had some austerities we underwent, but there was one thing that was, it was, no doubt in our hearts, and remains no doubt in our hearts, that Prabhupada was very pleased. Very pleased. He wrote these books for us to read and to distribute and to make others fortunate. So this Shastradhan program, you can find out more about it. There's a newsletter that came out and uh, called Shastradhan. And it's a way... You can help the devotees here do what Srila Prabhupada uh, wanted all these temples to be established for doing, is to bring people here for chanting Krishna's name and for going out and introducing Krishna's name in the form of transcendental sound vibration through the holy name and through the Brihat Padanga, the transcendental book distribution, and give, make others fortunate by coming in contact with the Krishna in the form of his transcendental name in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So we thank you very much for your patience in listening to us this evening. And uh, we hope sincerely that uh, we've been able to say something that's relevant and uh, that you can take with you tonight. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Amen.